Here in the empty spaces right here, this is where in a previous video I showed planting some bulbs. It was uh, gladiator alliums in this area, it, right in front of that concrete little bench, which I use as a marker for my fountain that I bought earlier this year. But in that empty space right there between the coneflower and the uh, silver lamb's ear, fuzzy wuzzy lamb's ear, yeah that's it. Um, that's where I planted about 12 to 15 gladiator alliums and I didn't really do too much to this side of the bed this year. I haven't really seen anything to kind of fill up the empty spots that was catching my eye. I'm really loving um, the dried millennium alliums right here, the summer blooming ones. They just seem to do so well and I just... The, the bees on these are just unbelievable. So that's one of my favorite performers. Over here on the west side, uh, I'm kind of just slowly building it up a little bit. Um, right in the front, you may see that little rebar stake. We are preparing to put lights up outside. And this was a quick little DIY project that hubby did. Um, normally we string, we had lights going along the beds on the ground, but last year we had such a problem with squirrels chewing on the lights that we're going to try this and see if it keeps the squirrels from, from eating the, the cords. So I've got a nine bark right there flanked by two hydrangeas and I had a whole row of Hakanakloa in front of the nine bark, but sadly last year only one of them survived. So next year I'm hoping to dig up that Hakanakloa down there at the bottom and divide it and just go from there. So hopefully that'll work. If not, I'll have to buy new. But here's a close-up of those rebar stakes that we're going to be stringing lights on. Basically all Hubby did was just buy S-hooks and he just welded it, not really caring, you know, about how it looked because you're not really going to see them at night anyway. And we're just going to swag some lights down along all of our garden beds, both in the front yard and the back. Here you see I've got some more empty spots. Uh, I have some bulbs in here from previous years I've planted. These again are the alliums because that's my favorite. They seem to do pretty good um, for me. I get a lot better performance from them than tulips.
Yeah, here you'll see some store-bought ivy I bought. I think I got this at like my local nursery. It turned this gorgeous shade of pink. I just, I've never seen that before. I don't know if it's the variety that did that or just the weather that did that. And here's the bane of my existence. It's one of my favorite yard art pieces, but trying to plant this is such a chore because it's hard if you want, if I want to change it up every year, it's, it's a gamble because so far this vinca that I put in here, five years now, that is the only thing that has survived. The roots are just getting baked in this, these cans and even if I put something as, as, you know, petunias, I've tried petunias, I've tried everything I could think of, and, and when we hit 90 degrees, it doesn't last. It has to be watered twice a day, and it still doesn't like it, so, so far the Vinca is really, really the top performer here, and I think it looks really, really pretty. So here we are in the backyard. You can see the dwarf... Not, uh, not nine bark. What are these? Wine and white, wine and roses by Jilla, the new dwarf ones that came out. Um, underplanted with a pinky winky tree on standard. So, You can see in the background, I'm really crappy at cleaning up my mess, but I hate to put, as soon as I put that garden cart away, I always need it again. So it, it, I just never, <laughs> I never put it away. Here's our dog Blitz, ever more on guard looking for squirrels and bunnies. Here's a new backyard project we did. I did some raised beds. Um, I've already bought a bunch of seeds to plant in them next spring, but I am looking forward to it. I don't really see a lot of veggies going in there. It's mostly gonna be for cut flowers. So there's our fire pit that we started taking out because we're gonna redo it. The thing was just a huge circle of gravel and a big fire pit, but it turned into just this weed bed that because of all the animals, the critters, the dog, run right through there nothing was working on keeping the weeds out not even the fabric that we had laid down so I just said to heck with it we're just gonna put grass and we'll move the chairs out there when we use it and put them back when we don't so it was just way too much of a pain You can see why I had to do a voiceover. The wind today was gusting up to about 40 miles an hour. That tree in the background is pear, I believe. I don't think it's Cleveland. I forgot the, the, the name of it. I'd have to look it up, but it is a pear tree. It blooms really pretty sweet little white flowers in the spring.
another wine and rose regilla down at the bottom. I really like using a lot of purple shrubs because it really just weights everything down and really makes green pop, as you can see right here. Even against the dried hydrangeas, it just looks really, really pretty. The rest of sage up against the fence. That's again where I planted a bunch of allium bulbs. I'm on the hunt for a winter interest shrub for that big space right there. I didn't find anything this year, so hopefully next year I'll be able to find what I want. And my poor bird bath is empty. I need to clean it and fill it. The artichoke plant was just amazing. It never bloomed, though. I didn't get it to bloom. I don't know if maybe if I planted it too late, didn't fertilize it enough. But I will try again next year. Because if you are looking for to spill, fill up a huge space really good, you know, really fast, $4 for one artichoke and it's six feet span. It's just amazing. And the color and the texture it gives you in your yard. I mean, for 4 bucks, you can't beat it. I put most of the cushions away in the backyard. I just couldn't stand, you know, all I was doing was cleaning up leaves and stuff. I figured if we have another bonfire out here, I'll just bring them out. We've been getting a lot of rain and wind lately, so. I think this is like the last flower of the season. Maybe remembering this wrong, but I think that's Creeping Veronica. My sidekick. This is the DIY fountain hubby and I did, and uh, it was it's been featured in uh, Country Guard magazine, and we love it. Sadly, this year never really had time to turn it on. Things were just kind of hectic. Here's right outside the fence on the driveway. I had a little spot where I clicked, created this little vignette and um, just put some garden pots just to kind of flank the garden, you know, the garage. My pot potting bench over to the right, which I cannot wait to decorate for Christmas this year. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tour and I can't wait to see what's up in your gardens. Bye.